Today, we're going to make nitroglycerin. <clears throat> Excuse me. Today, we're going to be making a nitro... Today, we're going to be doing chemistry... You know what? F*** it. Today, we're making nitroglycerin. First, we'll need pre-chilled sulfuric acid, 98%. Sorry, Europeans. And you'll need 68% nitric acid, both of which are incredibly hard to get. We need to make a nitrating mix, and this is where the sulfuric and nitric acid come in. When we mix the two together, we'll get a nitrating mixture. The only thing is we need to make sure it's cold. And yes, this glass was annoying. I actually decided to mix this outside the ice bath, as it's a little bit easier. So this is me pouring the sulfuric acid in. I then slowly added in the nitric acid, and you can see there's a bunch of toxic fumes being produced, so I made sure to do this in a closed space. I then let it sit in the ice bath, stirring for about 10 minutes. Now, I don't want a runaway reaction, so I'm going to put a thermometer in here, and we're going to measure the reaction's temperature. I cannot have another one of those. Now, since we're making nitroglycerin, we actually need some glycerin, and we're going to be using 3.5 grams. And if you're wondering why these amounts seem so similar, I actually stole from apoptosis, so shout out to him. Now, when we add the glycerin, we need to make sure to do this dropwise, as this is an exothermic reaction, and the temperature will shoot up. We need to keep this below 10 degrees Celsius, as if it gets up to about 30 degrees Celsius, it will do a runaway reaction. You know. You can see an instant shoot up in temperature the second I add the glycerin in. I have ADHD, so it's hard to focus on most things, but knowing that this could run away definitely locked me in. And yes, I do have ventilation, and it vents directly out to my neighbor's yard, so I'm perfectly safe. Our solution has turned cloudy, and this is due to the formation of the nitroglycerin, which means our reaction is working. Once all the glycerin was added, all we have to do is just let this react for about 30 minutes. As you wait for the reaction to end, might I suggest to go hug your mother, commit tax fraud, or do other questionably moral activities. I, for one, am going to use the nitroglycerin to make a heart medication, which involves first making a 5% dextrose solution. Now, dextrose serves as a carrier for the nitroglycerin, which allows for the controlled release of the medication. Nitroglycerin relaxes blood vessels, improves blood flow, and reduces the heart's workload to treat chest pain. This is extremely useful in hospital settings, as this can be a way to stabilize patients with different types of heart conditions. And after 30 minutes, we still have a cloudy solution, so it looks the same. The next thing that we had to do was pour this into a glass of cold ice water, as when we pour it in, the acid will be dissolved into the water, while the insoluble nitroglycerin will just go to the bottom. I turned on mixing, just to make sure everything was mixed, but also, who wants to do the PCAM of all of this? Don't we all just love physical chemistry? Never mind. After mixing for a couple minutes, we can see that all the acid is dissolved, and we can see our nitroglycerin on the bottom of the beaker. To clean the nitroglycerin, I'm going to first start by decanting most of the water off of it. You may notice some nitroglycerin that floats on the top of the surface, but that's okay. That can always be retrieved later. It's just important to get most of the water off. To get the nitroglycerin, we're going to use a separatory funnel for the final portion, just to get it all. And that white substance on the bottom, which looks like explosive cum, is the nitroglycerin. As mentioned before, some of the nitroglycerin likes to sit on top of the water, so shaking the apparatus can sometimes make it go to the bottom. I used another beaker to collect the nitroglycerin, and then we're going to do subsequent washing steps to make sure it's further purified. The first washing step is going to be a saturated sodium bicarbonate solution to make sure that we get any acidity out of the nitroglycerin. A stir bar is definitely more preferred for this method, but just shaking the beaker around seemed to work. And like before, we need to pour this back into the separatory funnel and collect the nitroglycerin. Nitroglycerin is much more dense than water, so it will always go to the bottom. Now, your skincare can also go to the bottom if you're not using geology. I've partnered with geology for this sponsor video because most people, especially guys like me, know skincare is important, but don't know where to start. And everyone has unique needs when it comes to skincare, like acne, dark under eyes, anti-aging, and just general clear skin and skin health. Geology makes it simple. Take a 60 second quiz about your skin goals and they create a dermatologist grade personalized routine that arrives at your door. It's backed by more than 10,000 five star reviews and 41 industry awards, including honors from Men's Health and Oprah Daily. Geology focuses on easy to follow products tailored to each individual, only using trusted dermatologist approved ingredients. 
So far, I've been using the personalized routine that Geology crafted for me, and my skin has legit never been better. I've been using their complete skincare set, and honestly, I love the simplicity of it with the numbering system. It tells me step by step which one to use, and the order to use it. I really like that it's tailored specifically for me, and it's actually giving results, making my skin a lot more clear. Now, if you want to check this out yourself, you can scan the QR code on the screen, or you can click on the link in the description box or pinned comment, and use code KIMDELIX70 to get 70% off your custom skincare starter set. Plus, you get a free gift and up to 50% off of add-ons. What's not to love? Make sure to check them out. And in case you totally forgot, we're going to collect the nitroglycerin again. The next step in the washing is to actually use brine or a saturated sodium chloride solution. This will remove any water in the nitroglycerin as the concentrated salt solution wants to become more dilute and because salts have a stronger attraction to water than organic solvents or in our case nitroglycerin, it should pull water into that layer. Of course it didn't fucking work. So I decided to use a stir bar and this made it much better. While it's not perfectly clear, it did clear up a fair amount, but it would be better to desiccate this over sulfuric acid rather than what I did. I even did a second washing with the brine, but it still didn't fully clear it up. This is okay though, as we don't need it to be perfectly clear, we just need most of the water out of it. All in all though, I had a yield of 3.45 grams, which equates to 39.9% percent yield. God, I'm a fake chemist. Oh hi, thanks for checking in. I'm still a piece of garbage. Anyway, now we can actually make this into a medicine. So I took 15 milligrams and I put it into this small little beaker. Well, I wouldn't say small beaker, I would, I would say average size. Now we need to add that 5% dextrose solution and I'm gonna hope this dissolves. Yeah, it's, it's not dissolving. Maybe if I stir it around a little bit. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine. To fix this, I actually added 18 milligrams of nitroglycerin this time and I'm gonna dissolve it in ethanol first. The ethanol should fully dissolve the nitroglycerin and it will be a lot easier to dissolve in the 5% dextrose solution. I am only going to be using one milliliter though, as I'm making a total 50 ml solution. I swirled it around for a little bit until it fully dissolved and it looks like our solution is quite clear. This means we can move on to the next step and we're first going to add 49 milliliters of the 5% dextrose solution. I do one last wizardly swirl and then upon contact we can see a precipitation of the nitroglycerin though it does dissolve as time goes on. Actually, now that I think about it, that could be the dextrose, but I'm not really sure. I washed out the beaker with a little bit of the 5% dextrose solution, though I made sure that our total volume was still 50 milliliters. The next thing to do was just add a stir bar and let this mix around for a little bit. The reason for this step is really simple and it's just to make a homogeneous mixture where everything is thoroughly mixed. I also filtered the entire solution through some cotton, however a 0.22 micron filter would have been much better, but I didn't have any. And in case anybody wants to know, this is definitely not GMP. Once it was done filtering through the cotton, I did put it into an injection vial as I want to simulate the heart medication as closely as possible. Note that this is not sterile in any way, nothing is autoclaved, and I'm not in a BSC hood, so please don't recreate this at home. And finally, this is our explosive heart medication. Now this is used in hospitals and it's generally in that 5% dextrose solution, so I would say this is a success. The only thing that I think I could add would probably be citric acid, which can be used as a stabilizer for the nitroglycerin. Now this may seem kind of boring just to make a medication, I think we need to test out nitroglycerin's properties and showcase some of them. I wanted to test how flammable nitroglycerin was, so I put a little bit on a recrystallization dish. I then used a propane torch and it Kinda caught on fire, but it really just kinda pushed it around. So what I decided to do was inject it into a cotton ball and see what the burn rate is. I thought it would be pretty cool, so I ejected a little bit and I caught it on fire. It almost looked like a jet engine on the side of it, which I thought was unique, and that was exactly where I injected it. My microphone wasn't working, so you can't hear the sound, so I recorded on my phone and I did a little different this time. It burned really cool, and it also reminded me of Fire Force a little bit. Now 
Now, I can't do the explosive test because of my neighbors, and I'll probably get the cops called on me, but you can look at videos where people detonate it, and it's pretty cool. Like this one. Anyway, the video's over, so adios, mi amigos.